Hi folks and welcome to this video. It's been a while since I'm using my Apple silicon powered MacBook Air and previously with this machine I used the M1 MacBook Pro. As you guys already know I switched it. Um, if you want to know the reason why just watch one from my previous videos. Well so it's about four months ago that I received the first machines with Apple silicon and through those four months I heavily used those things as you see here probably on the screen in Visual Studio Code yeah, we just do the code, Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro right here, even in Lightroom for some photo editing stuff. And well, I'm just using the baseline configuration right here and it's doing absolutely fine. So, well, that's not the end of the video, obviously. I split it, uh, the video in five parts and you just can watch them by the markers on the videos, jumped b between the different portions. And first of all, I just want to thank my sponsor for this video. Um, as you guys probably know, without a sponsor, I would not be able to make this video. So let's just roll that clip. Skillshare is an online learning platform, which is highly affordable for about $10 a month on a yearly subscription. I personally love the fact that with one subscription, you get so many different high quality videos from all different fields out there. You can learn about coding, filmmaking, marketing, animation, UI, UX design, and so on. So there is limitless possibilities. One of my favorite things in software development, as you guys probably know, is clean code and guess what? On Skillshare is a lovely course from Christian Hamann, senior developer at Microsoft from Berlin, about the JavaScript toolkit, write cleaner, faster and better code. I highly respect Christian and can recommend his class without any doubt. You will just learn how to write elegant, clean and better code in the future. If you're completely new in the world of software development and clean code is just a phrase which confuses you, don't worry more. There are plenty of beginner courses on Skillshare as well. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner, intermediate or expert developer or in your specific field, you can always and will always learn more on Skillshare, I guarantee you that. What have you done? Skillshare and I partnered up so that the first 1000 users who uses my link in the description to sign up get a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. And now let's get back into the regular video. All right, back to the regular scheduled video. So first big, big part or big positive part is the battery life. Apple claims that they make wear has a battery life of 18 hours and the MacBook Pro has a stunning whopping 20 hours. I didn't measure it to be honest. Um, the only thing I know is it lasts at least a day of heavy use, probably two. Uh, before that I got a 2016 MacBook Pro 15 inch and boy that machine ran through the battery like crazy. It was that in two hours, one and a half hours. This machine, a full day of heavy workload of coding, editing, yeah, normal stuff, browsing, surfing the internet, no problem at all. You cannot drain this battery quick, believe me that. Even right now, I'm running an external monitor, I am recording into this machine for a Scarlett uh, audio device, no problem. The second very, very huge part, you guys probably guessed it, is performance. I downgraded from the Pro version to the Air and I didn't really notice any differences. The performance is just incredible. The only time this machine struggled, but I know that the pros also struggle, is when you put in 8K footage from a Canon um, EOS R5. Other than that, this machine performs and performs and performs, so I really didn't have any problem. Is it coding, debugging, deploying? I just got the 8GB version. I would recommend if you do this on your main machine or only your main machine, go with the 16x8, will do the job. You guys know I do have a Windows rig here just for some legacy apps. That's still a huge part of my daily business. I cannot run Windows on this machine, but other than that, it's performing like a champion. Power 3 or Seller 2. Yeah, what should I say, to be honest? I was stunned. I was really stunned what Apple did with Seller 2 to emulate the Intel environment and to run those applications on an M1 chip. I didn't notice a real, real difference. I also ran uh, the version of uh, Visual Studio Code on the Intel, uh, on the non-optimized Mac version, the Intel version, no problem. I run Lightroom Classic frequently. No, no real problem there. Um, you can get to an a certain point where it will struggle if you import plenty of high resolution files, but other than that, no problem at all. And all the other apps, as I've seen in my videos before, Microsoft apps, 
which are not natively available run like a champion. So it's really, really stunning, especially if you compare the original Rosetta version, which was put out, I guess, uh, when the switch from PowerPC to Intel happened. Those things gave me quite a lot of headache. This Rosetta 2, oh my boy, this is really, really stunning. Okay, part four, and that is a big minus of this machine, is the ports. You only have two ports, which is very, very limiting. Right now, I cannot uh, charge it. I have to use a dongle like this, where you got a regular USB ports, HDMI, an additional USB-C, two USB-A boards again, so a total of four. That helps, but it's also kind of struggling. Another big issue is that you only have two ports on your left side, so if you are, yeah, no problem with that, if you're charging and your cable comes from the left side, if you only have access to the right side, you get a mess because you have to lay the cable around your monitor, your display and so on, which is, yeah, quite frustrating. So I'm really, really hoping they release a full port version or even more, as the rumors suggest, pretty, pretty soon. So I will probably upgrade to a new version just because of the ports. Other than that, this machine does exceptionally well. All right, now the fifth and the final part. I guess this point doesn't affect many of you folks, but Keep in mind, you cannot run Windows natively via bootcamp. You cannot even emulate it with VirtualBox. Sure, you can the ARM version of Windows, which is not sufficient for me because legacy apps, which are optimized for 64 bits Intel or even the 32 bit version, doesn't run on ARM. So you have to keep that in mind. I would highly suggest you guys, if you're planning on looking for such an Apple Silicon chip, check if your application that you require for work for your business, for university, for whatever, if it's running on those Apple Silicon chips. The list keeps increasing daily, but not all apps are optimized yet. So please keep them in mind. Now, that are my five key takeaways of four months of usage. As I said before, my main reason is still the Windows machine because of the legacy apps. But once the legacy apps are removed from my portfolio for my daily work, I could see myself totally switching to the OSM1 chips because, oh my goodness gracious, they are so great. The battery life is exceptional. The performance is outstanding compared to, to Windows. Even these fanless MacBook Air outperforms many of the Windows machines I know and I tried. Surely it's not outperforming this 12 core Ryzen 3900X, but it's coming close to be honest. It's becoming very close. So that was a huge surprise for me. All right, guys. So that was my five key takeaways in my long term review of the Apple Silicon M1 first generation chipset. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.